This is just the beginning of woes. Anyone who thought 2020, especially under a new administration, would get better are fooling themselves. Stand by for heavy rolls. People are so buffaloed. The Apostle Paul said in the last days perilous times will come. Well, perilous times are here. Wake up all you sheep, before you become lemmings and run headlong into disaster. It's not going to get better. There is no way to fix the economy. The folks who control the nation now know this for a fact, and are just trying to stave off disaster until they can control everything. The economy will only worsen, and coupled with more pandemic trouble our economy is toast. The child adult power brokers that are in DC are clueless and are more interested in getting revenge on Trump than in tending to the real pressing issues that we all face now. Prepare for chaos and a big train wreck. The economic downturn that we are currently experiencing is making the last recession look like a Sunday picnic. Yes, 2008 and 2009 were bad, but they weren't anything like this. Unprecedented intervention by the Federal Reserve has allowed the rich to get even richer during this crisis, but meanwhile millions upon millions of ordinary Americans are deeply suffering. Unfortunately, what we have gone through so far is just the beginning. As a child, I was a big fan of Sesame Street, and one of the characters that really stood out to me was Count Von Count. I loved the fact that he was always counting things, and that is what I am going to do in this video in order to illustrate how bad economic conditions have now become. Let's start with the number 7. According to the Congressional Budget Office, approximately 7 million more Americans would have jobs right now if the pandemic had never happened. But in fact, what the CBO is projecting is dire, around 7 million people out of work in 2021 whom CBO thought before the pandemic would be working. That's dire, and a call to immediate action, not calm, not wait and see. Personally, I think that estimate is way too low. In fact, the Federal Reserve says that 152 million Americans were working before the pandemic started, and only 142 million Americans are working now. So the CBO estimate appears to be off by about 3 million. Count Von Count would not be happy. Let's try another number. According to Bloomberg, the number of Americans living in poverty has risen by 8 million during this crisis. Support is rising among policy makers to address America's child poverty crisis, which is getting worse as the pandemic drags on. More than 8 million Americans, including many children, fell into poverty during the second half of last year, exacerbating the racial and income inequalities that are holding back the U.S. economy. In this case, I think that this is a reasonable estimate, but that number will inevitably keep growing in the months ahead. One of the big reasons why it will continue to rise is because hordes of small businesses will be collapsing, and that brings us to our next number. According to a study that was recently released by the Fed, 9 million small businesses in the U.S. say that they won't survive in 2021 without more government assistance. 3 in 10 small businesses, or 9 million out of the estimated 30 million in the United States, fear they won't survive in the coming year without additional government assistance, according to a survey recently published by the Federal Reserve. The Small Business Credit Survey, which was conducted last September and October and released last week, showcased the incredible burden the pandemic has placed on America's small businesses, as 88% of the businesses surveyed reported that sales had not yet returned to pre-pandemic levels. Can you imagine what our country would look like if almost a third of all small businesses permanently disappeared? If you watched the Super Bowl, you were bombarded with messaging about the plight of our small businesses. We have never seen anything like this before, and that is because our small businesses have never had to face a crisis of this magnitude. With each passing day, more small businesses are folding, and nothing that the federal government is going to do will completely stop this trend. Our next number is 10. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, 10 million renters were behind on their rent payments in January, and many more people anticipated not paying rent in February. An estimated 10 million renters were behind on their rent and at risk of eviction in the middle of January, according to a Census Bureau survey. And an estimated 16 million renters had little to no confidence they could pay rent in February. Overall, U.S. renters now owe at least $30 billion in back rent. This has created extreme financial pain for America's landlords, and when the rent moratoriums are finally lifted we are going to see the largest tsunami of evictions in all of U.S. history by a very wide margin. Before I wrap up this video, let me leave you with just one more number. 
So far in 2021, the number of passengers at U.S. airports is down by more than 60% compared to 2019. Over the past seven days, not quite 707,000 passengers per day on average passed TSA checkpoints at U.S. airports, a measure of how many passengers in the U.S. are flying somewhere. This was down by 61.6% .6 from the same period in 2019, the last full year of the good times. At the end of January, the drop from 2019 was over 65%. I honestly do not know how the airline industry is going to survive this without government help. Speaking of not surviving, Democrats have introduced a bill in Congress that would essentially deal a death blow to the gig economy. The legislation at the core of their agenda is the PRO Act, which Democrats just reintroduced with sponsors including Speaker of the House Nancy Pelosi and Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Among many other things, the bill would severely restrict the legal definition of independent contractors in a way that would largely end the gig economy as we know it. The legislator's stated intention is to protect workers and bolster their rights under law. Through the reclassification of independent contractors, Democrats hope to force gig economy companies to hire workers as full employees and thus provide them the accompanying salaries and benefits. If this bill passes, it would absolutely devastate Uber, Lyft and countless other companies that rely on gig workers. Basically, millions of jobs would go, poof, with one stroke of Joe Biden's pen. According to the Bureau of Labor Statistics, more than 50 million Americans are currently employed by the gig economy. It is great to want those workers to have higher pay and more benefits, but if those companies go out of existence there won't be any jobs at all. These are very dark times for the US economy, and the outlook for the future is exceedingly bleak. However, in the short-term economic conditions should stabilize somewhat thanks to the huge stimulus payments that the government will be sending out. But that bubble of hope will be very brief, and everyone should be able to see that much more pain is on the horizon. Welcome back to the Nomad Economist. Have you ever been at such a low point in your life that it seems like there is no hope of ever turning things around no matter how hard you try? Right now, there are millions upon millions of Americans that have been emotionally crushed by this economic downturn, and many of them have completely lost all hope. Those around them may be telling them to, hang in there, but month after month goes by and nothing ever seems to get better. For a moment, I would like for you to consider a scenario. Imagine that you own a successful small restaurant somewhere in the country. Despite the odds, the restaurant has been successful enough over the years for you to make a living, but now during the pandemic it has been bleeding red ink for months. You keep putting more of your own money into it to keep it alive, but now your own bank account is running dangerously low. The office job that your wife had was always a steady source of income for the family, but she lost that job shortly after the pandemic began. Unless your wife can find a comparable job very quickly, you won't be able to pay the mortgage in a couple of months. Meanwhile, the drug company that produces the medicine that your son depends upon to survive just raised prices for the third year in a row and your family doctor just told you that your daughter desperately needs surgery. At the same time, your hot water heater needs to be replaced and something is wrong with your vehicle but you are afraid to take it to the mechanic because of how much it might cost. Does any of that sound familiar? Before, I discussed the fact that 8 million more Americans have fallen into poverty during this economic crisis. With each passing day, the middle class is getting even smaller, and a recent Pew Research Center survey found that approximately one-fourth of the entire country has had trouble paying their bills during this pandemic. A new Pew Research Center survey finds that, overall, one in four adults have had trouble paying their bills since the pandemic outbreak started, a third have dipped into savings or retirement accounts to make ends meet, and about one in six have borrowed money from friends or family or gotten food from a food bank. When you know that there isn't going to be enough money to pay the bills this month, that can cause an extraordinary amount of mental stress. If that has ever happened to you, then you know exactly what I am talking about. Sadly, financial anxiety is one of the biggest reasons why so many Americans are suffering from mental health issues right now. If you're stressed out, anxious or feeling lonely, you are not alone. Nearly half of American workers have been suffering from mental health issues since the pandemic began, at a significant cost to their well-being and potentially to their employer's bottom line. It shocked me to read that close to half the country is willing to admit that they are dealing with mental health issues during this crisis. If we are struggling this much now, what will happen when things start getting really, really bad?
Many Americans never expected to be facing such severe economic pain in 2021. Just recently, Joe Biden rescinded an executive order that had been signed by President Trump which had significantly lowered the cost of insulin for low-income Americans. When a 24-year-old college graduate found out how much he was going to have to pay for insulin from now on, he started freaking out. Hi everybody, so I'm just having a little freak out in my car, because I just found out my diabetic supplies, like my insulin and my pump supplies that I need to live are costing $2,000 a month, said the man, who appears to have type 1 diabetes. I am 24, I only just got out of college before the pandemic hit and I'm not making any good money. How am I supposed to pay $2,000 for something that I didn't do anything to get? So how would you answer that question? Would you just tell him to go get a better job? I don't know anything about his life situation, but he appears to believe that he is totally out of options. In fact, he has come to the conclusion that he can't afford to live and that his only remaining option is to give up and die. America is BS, like I can't afford to live, the man shouted, gripped with emotion. I have to pay for something that I did not at all, at all do anything to get. So I guess I'll just die. According to the CDC, more than 34 million Americans have diabetes. Are they all supposed to just die? Poverty is growing all around us, and we need to have deep compassion for those that are greatly suffering during this crisis. Earlier today, I came across a list of things that Reddit users say they have personally done to get through hard times. Here are a few examples from the list. Never fill up the gas tank all the way. You don't want to be in a situation where you have gas in your car but no groceries. If you use the oven during winter, when you're done, leave it cracked so that the heat warms up the rest of the house more. Going to the doctor isn't an option until your fever is sustained at 104, a bone is broken, or the tooth rotted and won't fall out on its own. Not eating lunch because you either, just ate breakfast, or, dinner's only a few hours away. Add water to shampoo to get it to last longer. If your shoes don't require duct tape, you don't need new shoes. Not being able to wash your clothes until you could do a full, and I mean full machine. Getting a stain on a fresh shirt meant scrubbing it with soap over the sink. From now on, each one of us needs to start living like every single dollar really matters. You may think that you are doing okay now, but a job loss, a major car repair or a medical emergency could literally strike at any time. In this economic environment, most Americans are living paycheck to paycheck, and that means that most of the country is literally just a step or two away from financial disaster. This was the Nomad Economist. Please like. Share. Leave me a comment. Subscribe. And please take some time to subscribe to my backup channels, I do upload videos there too. You'll find the links in the description box. You will also find a PayPal link if you want to make a donation. Thank you wholeheartedly to all those of you who have already donated. Stay safe and healthy friends.